some people think the Great Axe is a brain-dead weapon, an unskillful amateur hour face roll option of weaponry. You want to know what I think? I see a Great Axe. A full-size 4x4 Jeep Wrangler Transforma Giga Chad Alpha Male. We're not just spending to win, we're out here mowing the grass of the battlefield, chopping down every peasant in sight, and weed whacking like we're getting paid for it. So the next time you pick up a Great Axe, just know you're not just choosing a weapon. You're choosing a goddamn lifestyle. Welcome to the Great Axe Club. Welcome, Descriptive Gaming. Hey guys, welcome back to Project Black Zone Episode 2. In case you missed last week's video, we started a brand new series where we'll be living inside the Black Zone for the next month or so. So if you haven't seen the last episode, I highly recommend you go back and check it out. But for this week's episode, we're going to be diving into the surrounding zones of Morgana's Rest. We'll be checking out some spots where we can farm silver and fame, while also checking out some of the contested treasure chests that spawn at random times. Before we get too deep into the video, I wanted to announce the winner of last week's giveaway. We had over 300 people sign up for a chance to win a Tier 7 Saddle Dire Boar. In case you don't win this giveaway, don't worry as we'll be doing another back-to-back -back giveaway for this week's video. But with that out of the way, let's spin the wheel and declare our winner. Good luck everyone, here we go. And the winner is... Tron. Congratulations my friend, you have won yourself a Tier 7 Saddle Dire Boar. I'll be adding you in-game to trade you the mount, so please keep an eye out on your friends list. And for this week's giveaway, I wanted to give you guys a mount that will help keep you safe inside the Black Zone, which is why I'll be giving away a Tier 7 Pest Lizard mount. This lizard has two unique abilities, the first one being Toxic Reaction, which activates when you take damage. Any nearby attackers will be intoxicated with poison, causing them to run around aimlessly for 3 seconds. The other ability is Toxic Cloud, allowing you to shoot toxins onto the ground and causing enemies to again run aimlessly for 3 seconds. To sign up for a chance to win this mount, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, like the video, and comment your in-game name in the comments below. I'll be picking a winner in next Sunday's video, so be sure to stay tuned for that. But without further ado, let's get into Project Black Zone Episode 2. Hope you enjoy. Before we dive into the surrounding zones of Morgana's Rest, I'll quickly show you the build that I'll be using. During my time in the Black Zone, I've decided I want to level up my Battle Axe spec. So this is a fairly cheap Battle Axe build, which is designed for fame farming in the open world. So for our Battle Axe abilities, we'll be using Rending Spin for our Q, Adrenaline Boost for our W, our E itself is Blood Bandit, and we'll be using Deep Cuts for our passive. For our offhand of choice, we'll be using a torch. Our helmet will be Scholar Cowl for energy shield, and for the passive, we will be using aggression. For our chest, we'll be using Mercenary Jacket for bloodlust, and for our passive, we'll be using Balanced Mind. For our boots, we'll be using Soldier Boots for wanderlust, and for our passive, we'll be using toughness. But we'll also bring minor work boots with us in case we want to use Flea to run away from enemies. For our cape, we'll be using Fetford Cape for Chain Lightning. For our potions, we'll be using Poison Potions. For our food, we'll be using Danglemouth Catfish. And for our mount, we'll be using a Tier 3 Riding Horse. This build will give you lots of sustained damage and healing to farm through mobs. In case you get into trouble, you'll have your boots to run away from enemy players. Now that we have our cheat build equipped, let's jump into our first zone. The first zone we're going to be checking out is Drownfield Fen, which is a tier 5 zone. And right away I noticed the dense amount of mobs just waiting to be farmed. Which brings me to my first tip. If you're a solo player looking to fame farm, tier 5 black zones will likely be your best option. While higher tier zones do give more fame, they lack a high population of mobs due to more established players farming them. But with tier 5 zones you'll likely find plenty of mobs to farm, find them easy to kill with their low health pools, and receive high quality rewards from empowered mobs. These empowered mobs grow stronger and give higher rewards for the longer that they remain alive. You can tell a mob is of higher quality when they are glowing yellow and larger in size. 
As you can see here, we take down this high quality unrivaled warrior mob, and receive 48k fame, 8k silver, and a bit of loot. Mobs such as these can be found quite often in tier 5 black zones. As I venture on, I find myself in Glacier Fall Pass and notice that a small treasure chest is about to spawn in. So I make my way over to see if I can take the loot. Lucky for me, no one else is around and I'll be able to take this chest without breaking a sweat. But sadly, the loot from this chest is nothing to celebrate, with the loot only being worth 45k silver, containing a couple of silver bags and famed tomes of insight. Feeling left unsatisfied from the small treasure chest, I set out to find some real quality loot, which is exactly what we'll find in the next zone, Drownfield Slough, with a large treasure chest spawning in just over 2 minutes. As I approach its location, I quickly realize that claiming this chest will not be as easy as the first one. With many players already in position to fight it out for the loot, I have to make a decision if I want to take the risk. As stated before, this build is not designed for fights such as these, but it's a relatively cheap set of gear to buy, so I figured, what the heck. In the name of the Great Axe Club, let's get it on. To our surprise, we're able to scare off the players camping the chest, take as much loot as possible, and make a run for it. This player attempts to stop us from getting away, but lucky for us we have our minor work boots equipped. So with that, we activate our flea ability and run for the hills. We make it back to Morgana's rest safe and sound, and now we can check out the loot that we took. Overall, the loot itself was worth a little over 300k silver, but the bags of silver would grant us 230k silver, giving us a total of over 500k silver, and a fair bit of Tomes of Fame as well. With that, we begin to sell the loot on the marketplace and make our way back out to Drownfield Slough. Traveling along the east side of the zone, I'm able to find some mob camps to clear. Since this is a tier 6 zone, these mobs were giving slightly better fame than the previous zone, but I wasn't able to find continuous mobs to farm out. So I decided to try out a solo dungeon to discover what kind of fame and silver I would receive. Shortly into the dungeon, I noticed that the rewards that I receive from the mobs aren't exactly as good as the open world mobs, with the main reason being that the high quality empowered mobs are unable to spawn in solo dungeons. But that didn't stop us from getting some decent loot. From this boss chest we were able to get a 6.2 Fort Sterling Cape with all the loot being worth around 300k silver. With having better luck farming inside the tier 5 zone, I head back over there to see what kind of fame I can receive. But not long after, my fame farming is disrupted by a couple players looking for a fight. Lucky for me, I have my mount right next to me, so I'm able to mount up and run back into Morgana's Rest. Which leads into another tip, keep within distance of your mount to avoid being ganked. After avoiding these players, I realize I'm not happy having been interrupted while peacefully fame farming. With that said, I decide to assert myself as a true axe player. I heal up, sell whatever items I had, and head back out to face these players head on. I scout the location where I saw them last, looking far and wide to seek my revenge. But this time I run into their entire guild, and almost die in the process. Which leads me to my next tip. There's strength in numbers, so choose your fights wisely. And that about wraps up episode 2 of Project Black Zone. Honestly, I've been having a great time living in the Black Zone so far. In this one session, I was able to make over a million silver, farm lots of fame, and find lots of action when it comes to enemy players. For the upcoming episodes, I plan on focusing in on PvP and different builds that you can run while in the Black Zone. If you have any other ideas for future episodes, be sure to leave them in the comments below, or join the Great Axe Club Community Discord. I'll be leaving an invite link in the video description below, so I hope to see you in there. If you enjoyed today's video, be sure to give it a like and subscribe to the channel, as we upload new videos every Sunday. But that about does it for me, be sure to sign up for the giveaway, and I'll see you all next week. Until then, take care and stay safe everyone.